by any means necessary. And we're going to keep the movement moving on as they say. We're now happy to be joined by Don DeBar, host of the Weekday World Show on Radio Justice LA. Don, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, my pleasure. Absolutely. And uh, Don, <laughs> the mainstream media seems like it's just now catching up to something that um, alternative journalists and media platforms have literally been saying for years. And that's that the whole Russiagate myth was just that a, a myth, a lie, a political tool that was obviously being wielded by the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democrats. But specifically, um, there's been a article that's been published on the Wall Street Journal entitled Hillary Clinton Did It. And so what this is all surrounding is uh, the testimony of one Robbie Mook, who was the Hillary Clinton campaign manager back in 2016, uh, where he basically testified that Hillary Clinton personally approved uh, the planting of this story about a relationship between Donald Trump and uh, Alpha Bank uh, in Russia. Russia that I believe sort of became the seed uh, for this whole narrative of Trump Russia collusion, which just had, I think, just a serious deleterious uh, uh, impact on the politics and political consciousness inside the United States that we're literally continuing to live through right in this moment. And so, I mean, I personally feel that, uh, you know, um, you know, folks with our uh, analysis have already sort of been vindicated on this issue. But I'm just wondering how your how this is sort of striking you in this moment uh, now that the damage of Russiagate has already been done. Yeah, and and quite a bit of damage it is too. Uh, the, if you look at the fact that we're at the precipice of nuclear war with Russia, it's it's hard to imagine uh, something that could be worse as a legacy of a failed election campaign. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we were reporting on this stuff. I, I, I was covering the, this election very closely. As you guys know, uh, Professor Tony Montero and I went to both of the conventions. We interviewed people, you know, in Cleveland at the Republican convention, you know, and the people in Philly at the Democratic convention who witnessed all kinds of stuff, reported on it contemporaneously. And, you know, this whole myth was being uh, assembled and perpetrated uh, at that time. It, it, the report, for example, in Sputnik uh, about the intercepted intelligence um, that supposedly provided some context for this was the 26th of July, 2016. That was during the Democratic National Convention. And we heard this being rolled out at the convention from, from the dais, from the stage, uh, with and and even before that, you remember Matt Lauer's um, interview. The, it was sort of like a serial interviews the, passing as a debate uh, with uh, Trump and Clinton. Clinton uh, said something that if Trump is elected, it would be like uh, Christmas in the Kremlin or some such thing. She, you know, the the whole myth that Trump was uh, president of Vladimir Putin's puppet. Um, that he was going to be installed and at the service, you know, by and at the service of uh, Russia's government, that they were selling that even before they got to this. And this thing that's supposed to be a primary piece of evidence that helped this disease jump species from, you know, the, uh, say, like, if you're talking about monkeypox, uh, the monkey press, like Slate and, you know, all these other underground corporate outlets into the, you know, so-called human press, the New York Times and Wall Street Journal and, you know, the NBC, ABC, etc. This was the vehicle. If you take a look at the New York Times the week before the election, which I just did, you know, preparing for this conversation, uh, and uh, we lived through it, so I remember it. Uh, you know, Slate publishes this article uh, that seems to uh, say that says there's a link between Alpha Bank, which is, you know, among other things, a lender to people like Trump, who's a developer. There's a link between them and the Trump campaign, which says basically Vladimir Putin's oligarchs are, you know, paying off Trump. That's the, the, not even the subtext. Some some of the newspaper articles essentially said that. That was published October 31st. The election was November 8th. That's eight days later. In the intervening period, it's not in just Slate. It's in the New York Times. There's four articles about this. 
between uh, November uh, October 31st and November 8th, just in the New York Times. Um, also, the Wall Street Journal, and again, all these others, CNN and MSNBC, were beaten on it 24-7. And this, afterwards, gives birth to this whole, the investigation that took place, including an attempted impeachment over, over the entire time he was in office that, among other things, left him unable to try to normalize relations with Russia, which was one of the things that he promised to do. And so here we are now about to have a nuclear war, perhaps. I hope not. But it sure as hell looks possible. And, and this is it's definitely not, not even a child of this thing. It's like a clone of what was done in, in 2016. Yeah, Don, you know, it's interesting that this entire trial, this trial of Michael Sussman has been going on uh, not too far from here, right, in Virginia for a couple of weeks. And you're not seeing any coverage of it in corporate media, obviously because everything that's come out in this trial has completely debunked all of the things that, uh, you know, these these allegations of uh, Trump collusion with Russia, it, it pretty much debunks everything They've, that the FBI agents have testified saying that they saw this evidence uh, allegedly about these Alpha Bank uh, 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 connections and, and came to the conclusion pretty quickly, actually, that it was really just a bunch of results of Internet searches using the word Trump <laughs> and Russian yeah. bank. <laughs> and yep. I mean, the fact that this is the kind of uh, information, if you want to call it, this was the smoking gun. This was what was presented to the FBI and to Slate and other media outlets as the the supposed evidence of collusion between Trump and Russia. I mean, it's one thing to say that, you know, the FBI didn't come out and repudiate this evidence immediately. That That's one issue. But then the other issue, Don, is the fact that nobody in these media outlets decided that they should verify any of this information, which uh, according to the testimony from the trial, I mean, it was the, the, it, the you didn't need a computer scientist to yeah. verify any of this information. All you had to do was really look at it. Right. And, and and that clearly was not done. So I, I think, of course, the, the testimony of, of Robbie Mook uh, implicates Hillary Clinton in absolutely, you know, giving the approval for this for this lie to be uh, trotted out to the media. But how much more do you think this indicts the entire media apparatus? Not just the media apparatus, okay? I'm looking at the, the story, for example, that's linked from the Sputnik story about this um, at the Hill. Here's one paragraph. On July 28, 2016, then CIA Director John Brennan briefed President Obama on Hillary Clinton's plan to tie Trump to Russia as, quote, a means, this is from a memo, a means of distracting the public from her use of a private email server, closed quote. Obama was reportedly told how Clinton approved, quote, a proposal from one of her foreign policy advisors to vilify Trump by stirring up a scandal claiming interference by the Russian security service, closed quote. After that, for months, everywhere, government officials, the media, FBI investigations, CIA, 17 flavors of intel agencies are all talking about, and then millions and millions of dollars in an investigation and, and everything else from every corner of the government, corporate media, and every institution in, in the country as if this thing were real, when everyone knows, particularly the people quarterbacking it, that it wasn't. And it, see, it's, it's portrayed now as if this was this one political party and, and construct, you know, trying to block a, another one, even an insurgent one to the whole. OK, fine. That's that's part of it. But this was really a propaganda war that and perhaps it's going to be a nuclear war against the people of the United States, because we were not allowed to know what was going on for the election. And just about everyone in interest from the government to the media to corporations that funded all of this were working together in a coordinate fashion to propose, to post this fantasy as reality. And it's a fantasy that's now enabled a war on Russia's borders. 
Yeah, definitely. And you know, this this just it makes me think, Don, about how this is such a tried and true tactic with the United States. If we look at Russiagate, if we look at the narrative of weapons of mass destruction, the Naira testimony, all these sorts of things, this country loves to blatantly lie to its people and the world as a pretext, usually for war, destructive, blood-soaked wars that impact countries and people for years and years afterwards. And it's almost like they don't care or aren't concerned about whether it's ever actually exposed this truth because, you know, by the time it's all said and done, similar to the to Russiagate, you know, the damage is already there. And uh, I I do think it's important, as we have been, to sort of focus on how um, the media just uncritically republished all of these things. And then when you had, uh, you know, independent journalists like, you know, for instance, Aaron Mate, who I feel like has, has probably done some of the, the best work debunking uh, uh, Russiagate. And, you know, he's someone who does not work. He does not report for a, uh, a Russian media outlet, but he's attacked similarly as uh, a Putin puppet and all these sorts of things. I mean, it's ditto for everybody with the same uh, uh, analysis. Similar, if we want to talk about the, the Ukraine war, in terms of if, if, if you ever attempt to give a full historical political context to, to the war in Ukraine, well, then you're seen as uh, uh, justifying or supporting the invasion. And so what we're really talking about is the tactic of thought killing in the United States. And the reason why it's so important to do that is because it creates a susceptible population for the U.S. government to do what, whatever it wants to do. But within that, they're being told that they're being informed. And, you know, I don't even know if I have a question within that. I just don't think we realize how deep the propaganda is in the U.S. Yeah. You know, people are primed for it. First of all, the education system does not excel at teaching people how to think critically. Um, It certainly does not explain the legal and political functioning of the political economy in the United States. Uh, And that's including for people that get uh, advanced uh, degrees, doctorates, PhDs and uh, master's degrees in, you know, postgrad degrees in economics, political science, etc. The average person uh, who has a high school education and maybe uh, two or four years at a state university is completely bewildered when they confront the you know politics in the United States and so when and and also how the media operates people don't understand the business model they don't understand the relationship uh, between uh, people who are in the news press releases the whole m- mechanism of how all of that works and also the editorial uh, control that exists and the uh, unity of uh, identity of ownership of the media media across the six or seven major platforms that exist now. And so whatever comes out of their TV set is bewildering to people who are already bewildered in the world that they've been turned loose in. And it's something that most people around the world, whether they're in developed countries or undeveloped countries, notice about Americans. And you have to come to the conclusion knowing the world that existed here in the 1960s, where it was quite different, uh, that this was an active project that was basically a war that was conducted against the American people that appears to have been fairly successful. Yeah, definitely. Well, we thank you so much, Don, for joining us today. We're going to leave it there and move to a break here on By Any Means Necessary on Radio Sputnik in Washington, D.C. We'll be right back. So please stay with us.